Hi, and welcome to Coffee Chat. Uh, my guest today is Jason Young, Superintendent of Schools for the Beautiful Plains School Division. And while we hope to get through a number of topics about the school division, the one thing, uh, primary topic, I guess, is going to be the new vocational high school that has been announced. So let's, you know, jump right in there. This was announced about a month ago by the province. Yeah, uh, first, thanks for having me, Rain. Uh, yeah, the formal announcement came March 24th. And uh, even the formal announcement kind of came, uh, I'll say, as a bit of a surprise to us. We, uh, we knew this was in the works, but we weren't sure kind of where that was on the order. So um, March 23rd, uh, myself and the board chair got an email from the province asking us if we could come to Winnipeg the next morning for a major capital announcement. And uh, March 24th was wow. the day it was announced. So that is definitely short notice for that yes but it's certainly as you say this has been in the works for a while so you've sort of been communicating with the province letting them know our needs yeah so i guess if we look at kind of the informal versus the formal process um, every five years we do a, a capital planning request to the province so the new vocational school has been part of our capital request for the past two years uh, as far as kind of the informal planning uh, at our board table in camera um, the board chair and I were actually walking through Nipua Middle School back in 2018 and the roof wasn't even on the middle school yet and uh, he posed the question to me what's next Jason and I said a new vocational school <laughs> so that's that's kind of where we started the informal planning and uh, formal planning for the last two years and then about six months ago the province uh, the capital department of the province reached out to us to have a little more of a formal conversation so we knew it was uh, on the radar at that point Okay, but certainly you weren't expecting it six months down the line for an announcement to come. We weren't sure. We weren't <laughs> sure. We were hopeful, um, but at the same time, we, we weren't sure how long that process was going to take. Yeah, certainly before we got the middle school, when I talked to people about this, they said, you want a new school? It's a 10-year process. You've got to go through this, 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 and this. And we've sort of been fast-tracked here for a couple of schools, it seems like. Yeah, we have. The uh, middle school is about a seven or eight-year process from kind of our first capital plan to uh, occupancy. And uh, the occupancy timeline of this is they want it occupied for September of 2027. So, uh, yeah, it's a tight time frame. That, that sounds like it's far away and it is not. It's not. <laughs> it really is not. Um, so the question I get all the time, I'm sure you get this all the time as well. Do we know where the school is going? Uh, not officially. So I guess the process first for uh, acquisition of property is being that we're a public entity, we have to get provincial approval to buy or sell any type of land. Uh, right. Even with Nipua Middle School, when we acquired a couple of houses uh, where the daycare site now sits, we had to get approval for that. So where we're at with the property acquisition phase is over the last two years, the uh, school board has explored about eight different sites in the surrounding area. And uh, we've kind of got that down to the site we're hopeful. We've requested permission uh, from the province to proceed with kind of the next steps of that purchase. And we received that approval about a week ago. So now the process, what it looks like is uh, we've engaged with the town of Nipua about services and, and some of those things, um, zoning, um, making sure the transportation uh, routes are adequate and then costing. We have to do due diligence in uh, providing to the province that it's a fair reasonable cost right. for the land. So that's where we're at now. Uh, none of the purchase is finalized yet, so you'll have to, say yet. have to wait a little longer, yeah. but uh, it but is But it's really process. been narrowed down now. It, like it really has been narrowed down now, yeah, for sure. And certainly, even to begin with, there's only a certain number of places around town where they have the space for a school. Like, what kind of space do you need for a school? Yeah, I guess depending who you speak to. So the province would uh, suggest a minimum 15 acres to build mm -hmm. this size of school. Uh, our board would like us closer to 25 acres, and no. uh, fair enough. Um, you know, we want to make it so it's uh, aesthetically pleasing. We don't want it to be crowded. We don't want congestion. And we want room to be able to expand there in the future if we need to uh, without impacting programming. So um, probably where we'll end up is, you know, in that area of, of approximately 20 acres. Right. And I know one location that had come a conversation with people was the old hospital site. That is what? four I acres yeah, five i believe acres. it's about four acres yeah so, and i think that's definitely out of the question it's out of the question when yeah. you when you back up and kind of look at uh, the site we're looking at if you were to look at the whole nipua collegiate the whole nipua middle school our division office and the track that's in the area of 10 to 12 acres um yeah. so that gives you a, you know an idea of the size we're looking at here so, okay, so it is then larger than that space there as well. Yeah, we anticipate the school will probably be about uh, 100,000 square feet. 
uh, in that neighborhood. So uh, Nipua Middle School is a reference point, it's about 46,000 square feet. Okay. Um, and then, you know, obviously looking at uh, a field and adequate um, parking. And the other part of the announcement was a 74 spot daycare. That's right, yes. So uh, again, needing, you know, 6,500 to 7,000 square feet for daycare and parking for it as Is well. Is that intended to be the same location, different location? Yeah, with all new schools now, with uh, the recent announcements about uh, lower cost daycaring, adding 10,000 daycare sites across the province with every new school comes a new daycare. Okay. Uh, so the only thing that really won't be decided at this point yet is whether it'll be a standalone daycare or attached to uh, the actual school, but it will be on the same site. Okay. Um, and we have both in our school division at Nipah yeah. Middle School and we built it. There's a standalone daycare on that site and at Carberry Collegiate, uh, we have a daycare built right into the facility. So you were looking specifically when you started talking about this for a vocational high school. So what is the reasoning behind that? <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, and, and perfect, I appreciate you asking that question. So our goal with this uh, school is for it to be a nine to 12 school with uh, robust, rich vocational programming. And we know that's probably the one thing our schools lack um, in, in beautiful plains for sure. Mm -hmm. But, um, and, and I'll speak to vocational programming in a moment, but. What we want from this school is we want it to house all our nine to 12 students. We want it to have robust academic programming, vocational programming, and we also want to expand the arts as well. Um, so specifically to vocational programming, uh, we're talking about the trades here and, and really what we want for our kids and our students and the, and the communities we serve is to have a facility where kids co can uh, get a leg up and learn about some of those trades while they're still in high school whether that's carpentry or pipe trades or electrical or whatever it may be, um, where they can explore some of that, find their passions, and then get uh, that upper hand to move on to possible careers. And I know um, as far as vocational schools go, I think right now the nearest ones are Dauphin and Brandon. Is that right? Yeah, that's accurate. So when we started uh, our sales pitch, for lack of a better term, to the province, that's one of the things we pointed out. There's some voids in our province. So there's a couple of vocational schools in Winnipeg, mm -hmm. uh, and then really the only other major vocational schools in our province um, are, like you said, Crocus Plains in Brandon. Uh, Dauphin Regional has some vocational programming, and then it's up to Swan Valley, and then all the way up to Thompson. Wow, okay. So uh, yeah, there's kind of a real void in our area where uh, there's a need there. And we know there's a need because things like our apprenticeship program, where kids are engaged in some of these trades, mm -hmm. continue to boom. Um, we can't even house it within the limits of Beautiful Plains anymore. We have kids going to Brandon and kids going all over mm -hmm. the place to get that kind of uh, skill set. Wow. Um, so with that said then, is there an expectation that there will be additional students from the surrounding areas that'll want to attend this school because of the vocational programs? We anticipate that to a degree. I, I don't think that was kind of our main uh, thought when we started this process, but at the same time, that's part of the natural due course, I think. We have kids that go from beautiful plains to Crocus Plains to get vocational programming now. Mm -hmm. So we fully anticipate that uh, we will have some kids that, that choose this option from surrounding areas because yeah. they want uh, vocational programming. And maybe come back from where they're Traveling to Brandon right now to that their home school, well be, yeah. you know, if, if it comes down to that. And I imagine they'll still have to continue going there until 2027. So, yes, correct. Um, but certainly they can plan for the future if they know this is coming. Now, you say you want the school to house all of 9 to 12. Yes. So that means probably a redistribution of students in the current schools. For sure. So what is that going to look like? Um, so we can kind of identify what we think it'll look like but again over the next four or five years that may change a little bit yeah. but what we do know right now is our biggest class size is about 130 students uh, in Nipua mm -hmm. and uh, it, to, to simplify if we look at our schools in Nipua they're all built for about 400 to 425 students per site so yeah. Kellington is built for about 400 to 425 kids as is NMS as is Nipua Collegiate yeah. so if we grow to the point of uh, our biggest class size of 130, that would mean probably Kellington ends up being a K to two school. 
Mm -hmm. If it doesn't grow quite that quickly, it may be a K to three school. And then uh, Nipua Middle School and Nipua Collegiate, so that current bigger footprint, mm -hmm. uh, would house either our grade three to eight or our grade four to eight, depending on where we're at at that time frame. And there's still lots of decisions to be made over those next four years about even how we run those schools. Will they be ran as one facility mm -hmm. uh, with one admin team, or will they be ran as two facilities and break those grades down a little further? So. Those are ongoing discussions we'll be having yeah. uh, with our staff. Certainly, I can't imagine there's any final decisions being made at this point, um, partly because of the growth rate of the school division. Correct. And I know you've discussed this with us before a bit and with the Banner and Press before a bit. Where are we at with that growth rate right now? Yeah, so um, <clears throat> when I came into the role of superintendent, so that was 2010, 2011, we had uh, 1,460 kids in all of Beautiful Plains. Mm -hmm. and. Um, where we sit currently at the end of April is 2,121 kids Whew. in beautiful plains. And just in the community of Nipua, again, if we go back to when I started as superintendent 13 years ago, we had 760 students in Nipua in two schools. Mm -hmm. So Kellington was a K to six school with about 360 kids and Nipua Collegiate was a seven to 12 school with about 400 kids. And as everybody knows now, we have uh, three schools in Nipua and our, our population in our Nipua schools, the end of April was 1,352 kids. <laughs> uh, so NACI had 468 kids, uh, Nipua Middle School had 428 and Kellington had about 456. So that's nearly doubled. It's nearly doubled. And yeah. you know, if we look at just even class composition, um, again, when I started as superintendent, we had two classes in every grade. So two grade ones, two grade twos. Yeah. The odd exception, we might have a split. Uh, but now, uh, with the exception of one grade, one class, we have five classes in every grade. And next year, we will have five in every grade K-8. Uh, unimaginable, like 20 years ago, 10 years ago, just yeah, to see this. It's, uh, it's not that we're a huge division. Yeah. It's the fact of how quickly we've grown. Yeah. And... Uh, staying on, on top of not only the physical space, uh, facilities wise, but staying on top of staffing, because with that is a, a huge increase in the number of staff we have as well. There's gotta be a huge staffing pressure, even right now, even before we're looking at a new school. Yeah, the, so just, uh, I guess to kind of put it in perspective, we employ about uh, 270 full-time staff now, and that's just our permanent staff. There's about another 80 staff that we have, you know, coming in to substitute, yeah. et cetera. And, and as we've grown, one of our challenges has, has been, um, as you hire new people, you have a lot of you, new young staff, so you're onboarding new staff all the time. Uh, you have a lot of maternity leaves because you have a lot of uh, younger teachers that are taking maternity leaves. So in this current school year, so the 22-23 school year yep. since the beginning of September, we've hired uh, 36 teachers. Um, since the beginning of September until the current point we're at right now. And we're just kind of in the midst of wave four of our hiring and we probably still have another 20 to go. Which is, again, you could staff an entire school with that. Like that's, you know, yes, yeah. at that rate. So um, with this additional school, when it comes, and again, we are talking four years down the road. So um, will we see an end to the portable classrooms? That's our hope for sure. So uh, where we're at right now is uh, we have six of nine portables being used full time. Yeah. So even though we opened a new school in 2019, we still have nine portables on site, yeah. uh, four at Kellington, five at the NMS NACI site, and six of those are being used. Next yeah. year, we anticipate all nine will be used again. But uh, part of the uh, process of the new school is the province will come to us with what they feel they should be funding or we need for mm -hmm. school, for space, and then we have to justify anything else. So if I go back to Nipua Middle School to kind of paint a picture for our community, um, when the province first came to us in 2016 and said to us, okay, we understand you need more space, where we started with that school was they were going to blow out um, the hallway of what is uh, the current NACI and add six classrooms. That's where the process started. Yeah. And as everybody can see uh, now, we ended up with a full new school, far more than six classrooms, gym, office, library yeah. and everything. Uh, I think we're starting this process with, uh, with the new vocational school in a far better spot. But um, again, we, we probably feel there's a greater need uh, for, for space than the province maybe 
uh, initially identified mm -hmm. and it'll be the, the diligence is on us to prove that that space is needed. Yeah, and it's not just classroom space, like all of these auxiliary spaces are, are full as well. They're at capacity, really. Yeah, we're starting to see that. Uh, a prime example would be our industrial arts and home economics. Um, we've always offered those seven through 12, mm -hmm. and now we're just running into the, the issue that we, we don't have the space to do that. So that would be one example. Uh, gymnasium space is another one. We probably have more students outside for phys ed classes than ever yeah. before throughout the year. Um, so yeah, those are all things we have to consider and plan for. Yeah, and, and speaking of the gymnasium spaces, just a bit of a tangent here. It's not just the school that's growing, it's the community. Those are also heavily used by community members. Yeah, for sure. Our, <laughs> our uh, gymnasiums, our schools in general, are used a lot for recreational use, and that's a good thing, but it yeah. does come with challenges too. Yeah. Like we have to accommodate our own kids and their extracurriculars yeah. first, uh, and then Absolutely, community yeah. use as well. And, and it's always interesting when uh, a new space is announced because, um, the public will start to ask things about, are you building this? Are you <coughs> building that? Are you getting this back? Are you getting that back? And, and the real reality that maybe people don't fully understand is we have to justify every square foot of space we get in that new building. Yeah. So will we be building a new arena? No, we won't because that's not really an educational space that we no. can justify. Um, but are there, for instance, any sports spaces going in there, like a basketball court? Well, I know you don't know this at this point, yeah. but is that something that's being considered as part of the facility? Yeah, for sure there'll have to be a gymnasium. And even with our starting uh, spot with the province, I think we're looking at a gymnasium that would be built for a school size of about 700 kids. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully we can get that adjusted a little bit. And then just like we did with Nipwa Middle School, as we work with architectural firms to design this, We'll be looking for flex spaces that we can flex and use for multiple multiple mm -hmm. uses. So at Nipah Middle School, for instance, uh, in our gymnasium, we have a retractable wall that opens up into our NPR room, which then allows us to add additional seating for things like music performances, et cetera. So right. um, hopefully we'll be able to uh, accommodate and incorporate some of that into our new build as well. And what are some of the considerations in the new build that have to be made for the vocational aspect of it? Like what spaces need to be included that wouldn't be included in a different high school? Yeah, so a lot, depending <laughs> on the vocational programming yeah. we're going to accommodate, you know, we and we've had lots of discussions around things like uh, just, you know, kind of an overview at, at 30,000 feet of things like graphics and communication, culinary arts, human ecology, carpentry and woodworking, plumbing and pipe trades, auto tech and heavy duty mechanics aesthetics and hairdressing welding so you can take any huh. one of those specialty spaces and i'll just look at culinary arts as an huh. example that requires a whole unique space to do culinary arts training exactly yeah. uh, as do does heavy duty mechanics and uh auto trades you know you need a full-size uh shop to do yeah. that then and those are big expensive spaces so yeah. Uh, we're kind of in the negotiation phase of what are those spaces we're going to get, but that's what we're working on right now. Do we have a sense of what the demand is for each of those spaces in this division or in this area? Uh, we have some inkling from uh, the demand that, that happens in our apprenticeship program, mm -hmm. but outside of that, there's some just some common sense elements to go in. We know we're in a rural uh, community with lots of uh, farming. And we know there's a need for um, mechanics. We're looking for one in our school division ourselves right now. Yeah. And uh, heavy duty mechanics. But all the trades in a growing community uh, become important. And even something like hairdressing, you know, in a community as it grows, there's a demand for that. Right. So um, I anticipate when the school opens, we'll try to have uh, as many of these spaces available as possible. We may not occupy them in year one as the programs grow on their own, um, but we would like the spaces because it's pretty tough to add on a, a heavy duty mechanic shop after the fact as a prime example. Well, exactly. And just thinking about the size of the school, um, our growth trajectory really hasn't slowed down. And as we build this new hospital that's coming, um, we'll certainly see an increase in population related to that as well. So is that part of the planning process here is planning for the future or are we gonna run into, you know, in 2028, are we gonna be saying, okay, where well, our schools are capacity again? <laughs> yeah, and that's part of the uh, the work we'll be doing with the yeah. province. So the initial proposal was the province uh, coming to us and being fiscally responsible and stating, here's kind of your population now. And uh, we will be justifying kind of over the next year or so that yes, our population in our high school is close to 500 kids now, but we anticipate another two to 300 kids 
uh, probably in the next three years or so yeah. coming to our schools. So we obviously want to build it at a capacity when we open that uh, we have enough room for the kids we have with some potential growth. Yeah, and certainly the birth rate in the town has increased as well. So you're seeing that at the other end in the elementary school where there's probably growth pressure. It's gonna yeah, be we, we had a well. bit of an anomaly this year actually with the small kindergarten class. It's oh. the smallest class we've had in a, in a long time, which surprised oh. us a little bit. But with that said, we do think it was uh, an anomaly and we'll yeah. probably get a big class again next year. So that's just sometimes you have a little dip. That's we do, all. yes, for sure. Are we seeing any of this growth pressure in the outlying schools as well? Uh, I wouldn't say pressure at this point because the you know the two closest schools to us from Nipah are Brookdale and JM Young, mm -hmm. and uh, those schools saw a steady decline for a lot of years. But what we are seeing in both of those schools is not only a stabilization of population but a slight increase. Hmm. Um, so, for instance, JM Young out in Eden. Uh, for the first time in many years, we're adding a half-time teacher out there for next year. Yeah. So they are seeing uh, a little bit of secondary growth for sure. Nothing mm -hmm. like Nipwa, but... Uh, Certainly not, but... But they are stable and uh, slight growth. And that's to keep them going anyway, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And then is Car in Carberry as well, which is also part of the division, not... People don't think about that all the time, but that is part of the division. Are they seeing any of this growth as well? Yeah, or? they haven't seen as much growth for sure. Uh, Carberry declined a little bit, but again, Carberry has stabilized. And at kind of the uh, early years, so the, the K-1-2 classrooms are bigger classes than we have in the rest of the school or rest of the grades through 12. Mm -hmm. So if that trend continues, we will see some growth in Carberry as well. Yeah. Although they, I think they have some room there still to, to expand a bit. Yeah, they do have some room, but again, those schools aren't like uh, abundantly, uh, they don't have a ton of space, but yeah, yeah, for sure. We could probably handle 50 students in each of uh, RJ Watt, the elementary school mm -hmm. in Carberry and Carberry Collegiate before we had to worry too much. Okay, so that's a problem for another day. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good challenge if we had it. <laughs> um, so as... Uh, Aside from like the new school, and, and certainly everyone is very excited about that, what has this school year kind of looked like across the division? This is our first, I won't say non-COVID year, but that we didn't have a lot of these restrictions in place for the classrooms. Yeah, I think it's been kind of a stabilizing year uh, for our school division, to be honest. So as you mentioned, we're uh, on the backside of COVID. You know, we still huh. have dealing with sickness and some of the concerns people have coming out of COVID. So that's obviously still there. But uh, yeah, there's lots of things that have stabilized our system. So one, COVID being kind of in our rear view mirror, two, Bill 64, and the uncertainty that that created with mm -hmm. the potential uh, doing away with school boards and making uh, beautiful planes one mass division that would have uh, not been beautiful planes anymore, but rather extended yeah. to the Saskatchewan border. And it would have been a huge division. So that's uh, behind us for now uh, as well. We, with our new staff, we have uh, a new admin team at Nipua Collegiate. Um, we have dealt with quite a bit of tragedy in our school division over the last mm -hmm. year. So that's been a challenge for us um, in losing several students and a couple staff members. Uh, but overall, uh, a positive school year where we've kind of been able to stabilize, get back to regular programming, mm -hmm. uh, regular extracurricular and regular events for our kids, which mm -hmm. I, I think everybody has welcomed. Is there anything that hasn't restarted yet or are we pretty much across the board? We've, we've gotten back in, into the groove of things. Yeah, no, we're pretty, back, pretty much back into the groove of things. Uh, and with that said, I think, you know, COVID um, allowed us to <laughs> learn some things and, and fast track some things in our school division. Um, you know, we probably are in a better place with technology than we've, yeah. we've been in <laughs> a long time. So some of those positive things that, that came out of COVID kind of as a ripple effect from what we were dealing with. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. No problem. I take a sip of water here. So um, we're coming on to the end of school year. We're into May already. So the end is in sight for the year. Um, what is next year kind of shaping up to look like? Uh, yeah, so as far as the end of the school year, it's the end of the school year for kids. It's the end of the school year for our educational staff, our, our teachers and our EAs. But uh, really, this is the season that ramps up for some of our staff. True enough. Um, this is when we get into all our major capital projects. Uh, this is the time of year when our, our maintenance staff and custodial staff and major summer cleaning ramps up. Uh, our tech department, this is when they deploy all the new equipment. Right. Um, so for sure, things are, are ramping up. As, as far as next year, um, 
goes for our schools. I, again, we, we expect to have uh, full academic and extracurricular programming going. That continues to expand. Uh, we continue to look at things like our bus fleet even because as our population increases, not necessarily that the number of kids we transport increase, but uh, just as, as an example, when we go on a field trip now uh, that used to be two classes in a grade, now it's five classes in a grade. So instead of two buses, it's five buses. So right. some of those things uh, y you need to consider. Yeah. Um, buses are expensive uh, pieces of equipment too. So all of those things, uh, the planning, the purchasing, the implementation of all those things, the summer months is when our school division rolls all those things out. Right, and, and certainly going forward, budgeting is going to be uh, a thing to think about as well. I'm not sure, um, what's the formula for how you get money from the province for the schools? With a new school coming, and obviously there's hiring pressure, there's all these things as well. How does that kind of work? Is it per capita? <laughs> is it per student? Is it? Well, there's a new funding formula that was supposed to be unveiled uh, this year that the province says will bring greater equity uh, to education. It was held back for a year. Right. Um, so that may be coming next year. It may not be coming next year. We'll see. There's a provincial election coming in October okay. too. So there's a political element to that for sure. But um, a as far as, and there's multiple pieces to that. The one challenge I think we have as a school division now is with no local taxation anymore, our money is finite. So whatever the province decides Beautiful Plains gets, that's what Beautiful Plains mm -hmm. gets. Uh, and then we have to allocate that accordingly. So, um, you know, when it comes to staffing or equipment or new buses or whatever it is we need as a school division, we have to make that work. Um, so that's a, a challenge with a growing school division because mm -hmm. we're always funded a year behind. Mm -hmm. So we're funded on our enrollment from the previous September. So if we grow 100 students in a year, um, there's which is what you're doing. Which is what we're doing currently. Yeah. There's already a challenge for us, yeah. uh, staffing to that level. So our board has been very good at kind of staffing where they think we'll be mid-year. Um, so when we start the year, we're typically a little overstaffed. By the end of the year, we're typically understaffed. As far as the new facility, um, it won't be completely funded by the province. So the actual facility itself mm -hmm. will be. But some of the things like technology inside the building yeah. uh, are things that our board will have to plan for and, and allocate funds to over the next uh, four oh. or five years so that we're ready for that uh, step when it happens. So you've got about four years to think about it. Yeah, we got about four <laughs> minutes to think about it and then about four years to try to plan for it accordingly. That's about so, right. uh, yeah, lots of planning. Um, is there anything else that you want the community to know about, about the division right now, about the new school, about anything uh, of that uh, nature? No, I think, um, you know, as I always say, I, I want to thank uh, the, the division our, right from our board of trustees, who is a fantastic group to work for, to the communities we serve, uh, to the staff that do the work every day. And, and we have great kids. So all those things add up to, to a great division. And, uh, you know, I, I think something that I'm proud of, I think our communities can be proud of. But uh, we all play a role in that. And uh, so just a big thank you to everybody for supporting the, the school division. Right. Well, thank you so much for joining me here today. We've certainly all learned a lot about what's going on and, and how maybe we can, we can help out with what things are going forward. My pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank all of you for joining us today.